Let's get, get this, this cat in there. Oh my Abby. god, he's getting so big. He's so big. He was at the vet maybe two weeks ago. Oh. Um, and I think he was a little over five pounds. He's still trying to crawl on you though. You're like, no, you're too big for this. Oh, uh, dude, my room looks crazy. So he he unlocked jumping, <laughs> and he I unlocked it like it's a level of a video game. That's great. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm really proud of him. You know, highest score at score yet. So he unlocks jumping, which is what cats do. It's fine. It's in the beginning, it was slightly annoying because like you're trying to cook and he's on the counter or whatever and you're throwing him off. Mm. But he got onto my dresser and you know how my dresser has all those little trinkets. So two things. I have a tassel, like this tassel lamp that my sister gave me that is a giant cat toy. I yeah. got it when I was catless and I now know, oh, come on, you're, you're all up in my wires. Abby, Ab. God damn it. Um, so <laughs> you're rejected. Um, so, so he f- discovered this tassel light and cannot let it go. So it's my, my light is now in a trash bag because yeah. he almost broke it twice, but now he's getting into all my like trinkets and stuff on my dresser on the wall. He broke this thing. My uncle gave me like 25 years ago. So I'm looking up all this stuff. Like, how do you discourage them from like getting on stuff? And one thing said tinfoil. So okay. my entire, my entire, cause the whole point is they would jump on it. Like, you know, they jump up and they're like, ah, and they're like scared of the tinfoil. So my entire dresser is covered in tinfoil. He's like and- Jaws and behind you, like his tail is like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> he's terrorizing you. You so, saw a- Okay. So, so that's what I did. So I put tinfoil all over my dresser. He jumps up on it. Doesn't give a shit. Doesn't care at all. Stop. No, actually doesn't- that kind of like. I don't know if that plays into my Google, but we'll see. So that's yeah. funny. Oh, we sh- I should also intro. Hi! Mm-hmm. Welcome to Non-Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. And um, that was Abs. And that was, that was, that was Abby. Oh man. I also wonder how much my neighbors can hear because like literally every night before bed, I'm like, no, no, <laughs> he knows. No, he just left. Um, Sorry, I confused you. He know he's he might be smarter than he's allowing me to think. I'm sorry. Oh that yeah, was he's the, definitely tricking you in some. That way. was the wrong note. I I scared him. That now I feel bad that I used no incorrectly. But no, he he understands it because like right before he's about to jump on my dresser, I clap my hands and I say no, and he gets really small down and goes, oh, I'm sorry. Aww. And then I turn my back and he's like, gah, gah. <laughs> 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 uh, what a psycho. Yeah. But I do think. Half the lore for me personally for having a cat is just something to yell at, just something to complain about. Maybe, yeah. You just you, you you use a cat like some people use drugs. Like you just need the distraction and just to not think about real life. Yeah, and that that there's pros and cons of drugs. Where like I love when he like he cuddles with me before bed or like while we're watching TV, and then the other half and like I love his little like meow when like. I go to walk over to his food to feed him. And then he starts meowing. And it's like, yeah, man, what do you think I was doing? Like, come on. Like, this is our routine. But like, I, I think it's somebody to talk to. <laughs> I think it's somebody to complain about. And then I also think it's just. I think you need to, to rephrase it. Over. It's not somebody. <laughs> it's Some not cat? somebody to talk to. That is a cat, not a human, not your best friend. He is my best friend. <laughs> I posted this picture. This was in my stories. This was like a couple of weeks ago. He was in the window. He was in the window of my apartment and his hand was up to the window. And I was like, who the fuck are you? Wa- you have no friends but me. Who are you waving to? Who do you know? <laughs> no, you get psychotic. Like when he like left your lap and came over to me, I thought I was like, like I looked at your face really slowly. Like I turned really slow to look at you. Yeah, she's mad. And then I turned... <laughs> <laughs> also one of my favorite posts where I just put a uh, betrayal or whatever that song is by Olivia yeah. Rodriguez <laughs> a traitor that's what it was I was just like you didn't cheat but you're still a traitor and he's, I'm just looking. <laughs> uh, but no he is he is a lot and I I, I love him I love him uh, how are you doing, Muffin? I'm fine. I just had to buy light bulbs. For some reason, all the light bulbs in this house, I know it's not like the most interesting talk, but like, let's talk about it anyway, because all the light bulbs in this house went out at once. Like you can't have the light above me on because it started flickering. The light bulbs in the living room, like that went out. So I had to like, 
I had to like take a light bulb out of another of a hallway thing to put it in that one. And then that's how um, I use batteries. I just have four batteries in my home and I'm just switching them from thing to thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the toilet light bulb went out. So, I mean, so I, I just have this image of you having one light bulb and using it from room to room. Yeah, just take it with you. <laughs> but all, all three of us have our own light bulbs, just like toilet paper in one of those houses that you like stay in where no one knows each other. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> love that. Um, uh, but so, yeah, I uh, so I. I, I got the ladder out and I climbed up and I unscrewed the thing that was coming. The thing couldn't get it back on, by the way. That's why I was like, I need five to seven minutes before we started this. Cause it's like, it I has- str- is it like that kind of weird nipple light? Yeah. The- Dude. First of all, I watched like a whole little tiny documentary about why those are the most common lights and why they're in every single apartment building. It was really kind of fascinating, but same. I, you take them off and I, my last apartment, it, I didn't put it back on for like, maybe two years. Cause every time I try and you're all unstable, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, scary yeah. for us short people. Yeah. And so I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. It's just going to go bare without it. Cause, um, but I went to the shop with like the two light bulbs I had to replace. I tried to go to shop without the light bulbs and I was describing it to the guy. He's like, no, just come back with the light bulbs. I was like, yeah, but I, don't, I have to unscrew the thing. And, and so he was right. Cause there are a thousand different types of light bulbs. Why are there so many types of light bulbs? Like it took us forever. We we're sifting through and opening boxes of every, we we're like, no, that doesn't match. Like, it, like if you've been to a hardware store, there's a whole wall of light bulbs. They're all different. Why did I don't it have get to it. be specific? Why couldn't it just be a, a certain size? The, because there's different sizes. So there's like the, the, the light bulb with the nubs on the sides. And then there's a light bulb with the screw. And then there's like bigger and smaller and like everything. Oh, this isn't a typical normal light. No. I guess, but even I if guess it was, so. I don't know. Is it just the UK? They have those light bulbs that like they like push in. They have the little two little knobs on the side and they push in. Yeah. I don't right. think they have them in the US. The yeah, UK, no, there's sure. like a million light bulbs. It's just, it was just, it's just look. Uh I'm annoyed. We have light in the toilet. Um flatmates, you're welcome. Nobody else did anything about it. <laughs> I want to get you a lantern, just like an old timey lantern, and you're just going through your house, and people are like, "Oh, did you lose electricity?" And you're like, "No, I just never changed." No, I'm the doing lights. this to collect taxes for all the work I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. It's just I had to rant about light bulbs. What the fuck? All right. <laughs> oh, also, I did the comedy store on Monday. I did like a new material night called Old Old Rope, and it was a lot of fun. I had a great set, and they recorded it. I don't know why comedy clubs haven't figured out how to mic an audience yet, but every time I listen back, I'm like, you cannot fucking hear the audience at all. Yeah. Well, but because one, they're, yeah, it's not, it's laziness. That's the, that's what it is because the microphone, they, you know what I mean? is already into a board. So that's just easy to pick up. And then they put a camera and they're like, that should be good enough, but they actually would have to dangle microphones or put them in the audience. And they don't want to do that because that only benefits us. How does it not benefit them? I don't get it. Like sounding like people sounding like they're having fun should benefit them too. But um, anyway, but then I had worn this, um, these overalls that had like a flower pattern on them and it was like purple flowers on a white overalls. And I, <laughs> I thought I looked so cute that day and like my hair was perfect. I was like, everything is perfect for this. It was like a great set. Um, I, I, uh, I looked good. I was happy with everything. And then I'm like, oh my God, I saw it. And I was like, I look like an Oompa Loompa. I look like an Oompa, like straight up, like, like, no. because of these overalls, my hips were so big. I was like, I can't show this to people. Um, you crop it if you really feel Yeah, I'm going to crop it. I'm going to, yeah. Because yeah. there's a couple jokes I can get out of that. But like, <laughs> do you know when you like, I know not to look at videos of myself doing stand up because it's better in my head. It's always better in my yeah. head. And then I see the reality of it. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was a goddess in my head. Oh, yeah. Well, it's also the idea that, like, if I had a good set, it kind of repaints everything. Like, that whole day just got better. Yeah. So, like, it, like, it, like, like, it rewrites history where it's just like, yeah, I felt great the whole day. And then I ate a sensible lunch. And then I went for a run. Like, all of us, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Like, I don't know what that is. Cause I've been, I did, um, I did a new material last night as well. And, um, there's this, it's, I don't even know where this joke is going, but it's, it's like, it's this kind of, it's one of my sillier jokes and ideas. And it's just this kind of weird, funny, silly story. And the beginning starts strong 
and there's one thing in the middle and there's kind of something at the end. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of loose or whatever. And it got more laughs than it did the first time I did it, which was a week ago. And I was like, like skipping home. Like, you know what I mean? It's not even finished. I have no idea where it's going, but I'm like literally skipping. And then somebody was just like, what'd you do today? I was like, I wrote half a joke. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have five new minutes I'm working on. One joke, admittedly, like there's no punchline whatsoever, but my, I, but me just going, what the fuck has been getting laughs and I've just been writing on that. Like, I know I need to come up with a punchline, but, um, but my thing is if, if you're excited about it, you'll find it. You yeah. know what I mean? And it might just have to be this like half a joke for a little while. And then something's going to push you. Something comes up something like, yeah. yeah. And then you're just like, oh, it just comes out of your mouth and you're like, oh, right. It was there all the time. Yeah. The time. Yeah. Um, some jokes that I've been doing before that don't get laughs. I don't know what I'm doing differently, but they just started getting laughs. I, I, I don't know. I've had that. I've absolutely yeah. had that where I was like, no, I know this is right. And I just keep pushing it. And then one day it just works. Yeah. Yeah. God stand up. You devilish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am about to travel. I'm about to be gone for a couple of weeks. Where are you going? Which, I'm going to Florida um, to do shows, but also stay with my friend Danny um, out there for a bit. And then I go to San Francisco for shows. And then I go to LA and San Diego, but I'm going to stay in LA for a little bit. So abs, abs is going to go get neutered. He's, he's going to come back a better cat. And he's <laughs> like mean a lifeless on. cat. It doesn't see a reason to live. Yeah. Hey, Hey, hold on a second. Hey, are you okay? All right. That scared me. He was, he was just sprawled out on the floor and I was just like, that's normal. And then I don't know. He just looked. There have been Sad. a couple of times where you just look over and he's about like, he's killing himself, like choking himself on something. <laughs> yeah. you know? Okay. Sorry. I couldn't let him rest. I had to throw a toy. I was like, that was freaking me out. Um, just the way, the way he was laying and the way he was looking at me, I was like, are you, are you dying? I can't, this thing is, oh, I, I, I think so you have much. a little PTSD from. Uh, I do. I think I have a lot of PTSD from tots. Not that like, I don't know. Also, like, I don't even know how people do babies. Oh, my God. They can put everything in their mouth. The amount of times I'm, like, taking something out of his mouth, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Anyway, so he's going to lose his balls and just come back more respectable of my stuff. That's going to be the um, soundbite at the end of this episode. Just <laughs> 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 um, and, um, and I'm going to – it was so half AK, half working because it's, like, work vacay, work vacay. Cause my, my mom, and my brother are going to meet me in LA and my sister's out there, but I have to rewrite a whole script and I'm going to do some of it before I leave, but now it's going to be even more work on a vacay. And I'm slightly sad about it. I mean, let's be honest. You were never going to go on that vacay and not work like whether you had a script I, or not. I know, but I mean, there's, so I'll say this, there's certain people that can like help me relax a bit more. And like, like for some reason, like Danny's place, especially because like she has kids. So like when we're doing stuff, we're like helping her kids and, you know, I don't know. There's like this, I become like half a mom when I'm with Danny. And so then it's like, all right, pull away and go do work. But like, I'm able to, I don't know. I feel like I have a job when I'm there somehow. Hey, 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 hey. He already broke one ring light and he was about to bring my second ring light. <laughs> um, and then um, I, I do have trouble writing in hotels. So I didn't think anything was going to get done in San Francisco. And then LA, I don't think anything will get done. Sorry, he was both destroying it and biting my ankle. I like couldn't focus. Like my ankles were being like gnawed to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, let me tell you about my day. Um, Oh, I, um, I hurt my, I hurt my neck at CrossFit and I just like between he sleeps on my back and then my neck hurting. I'm just kind of like, I just oh, feel you're so beat up. Yeah. I feel a little beat up. It's, it's like 70% better. I went to this like masseuse. I've always got like my whole back is like cupping, like it has all that. And then he worked on it and I don't, I don't feel pain just sitting here, which is what happened when I first got it. But like sitting, like if I'm on the couch, and like 
it's just such a ridiculously long neck and then sleeping like turning and stuff so it's still like you're such a ridiculously long i got have such a swan like neck <laughs> i've always just felt like it just neck doesn't is so beautifully swan like if i was a ballerina i could see how it had value but outside of that it's just more to choke like <laughs> <laughs> just don't see the value of it <laughs> don't get me uh, wrong i'd rather have this than no neck but i think your neck is great <laughs> thanks maria you're welcome um should we do announcements yeah i think we kind of did a lot of them like where you're touring and stuff um <laughs> um but patreons people that uh, support us uh we're grateful you're awesome um, if you don't know, uh, you can, um, by supporting us, you can get weekly bonuses. You can get monthly bonuses. You can get, you can become a Google guest. You can get stickers. Um, you can control our Googles. There's so many fun benefits and everything is at patreon.com slash two non doctors for doctors. Oh, I am rusty. <laughs> yeah, I know it's every two weeks thing. It's like, what do we do? Um, you can follow us on the socials. We're on Twitter facebook and youtube at two non-doctors it's the number two full word doctors and instagram at two non-drs while you're at it follow me on instagram at maria shahada that's at yeah. liz mealy and um yeah. uh if you have time and you're feeling kind please leave us a rating and review on apple Podcasts because it helps us we love it we share it we get excited um thanks for leaving all the reviews you have left so far and um yeah um my stuff what am i doing so this will come out after that. Um, I guess I'm going to be in Barcelona. Ooh, <laughs> That's when? still not on sale, I, but it's my fault. I haven't reached out anyway, but that 9th and 10th I'll be of September. I'll be there. And um, otherwise kicking around London, going up to Edinburgh for a little bit, but I just got an email saying that the trains are all screwy. My train might get canceled. So I don't know what's going on with Edinburgh. That's a mess. It is a There's mess. A lot of people like, there this year. Yeah, it's... um. Everyone's like, like my show is sold out. Like everyone's shows are selling out. I'm like, damn, this was a year to go. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw that as well. And you're just like, all right, let's all calm down. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do that. The world did that. <laughs> um, I officially made my announcement um, online, but my album, uh, my album and special uh, comes out September 6th. Uh, it will be premiering on YouTube 8 p.m. Um, so if you go to my YouTube, um, you can actually set a reminder on the video and it, it will um, be like, go watch Liz is special. Um, but if you haven't, please subscribe to my YouTube. And then, uh, like I said, I will be in Florida, um, uh, uh, Pen Pensacola and Panama City, uh, 18th and 20th. I don't know which one. Um, 18th and 20th. I just don't know which one's P Panama City. San Francisco is after that. Then LA is August 30th. San Diego is the 31st. San Diego is a free show. So you just have to reserve tickets, um, which is pretty cool. And then in September, I'm in Colorado, Phoenix, which was just added and Long Island. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, fan mail. Oh yeah. From Dimitri on YouTube. And um, they say Jim Rohn famously said that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. Great quote. Thanks, doctors. But I missed that. I never saw that. Um, cool. Because that's because I was like, oh, it's like, I think I have the joke about like, they say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, which I started doing it on stage and has been working like that gets a laugh right away. And then I'm like, I'm, what do I follow it up with? <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, what's the beginning of the joke? I'm confused. That's it. It's like, it's like, um, they say, oh, no, wait, they say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I called all those people and told them to up their game. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I go into material about being broke, but, um, so Jim Rohn said it. Jim Rohn was the, he was like that talker that, um, like told everybody they can make all the money they want. Who is Jim Rohn again? I don't know. He sounds from like the eighties. Yeah, he's one of those guys where the, the audio is probably a little bit like he's an American entrepreneur. So I think an American entrepreneur is like like the um, prototype the, for influencer. I literally was going to say the same thing. It was like the 1995 influencer. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, how would Tony Robbins not be con called an influencer if he started today? Uh, within just six years, Roan earned his first fortune. 
then lost the millions he had made. Damn. Wow. Ron, well, what'd uh, you do, bud? Did, what he, did he get a shitty best friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you friends with me? What happened? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry I spent all your money, bud. <laughs> Oh, he died with a, a net worth of more than $500 million. So I think he was up. You're fine. Down. You're fine, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I guess he was part of Herbalife, which seems like a pyramid scheme, wasn't it? Like that's one of those things where you had to sell Herbalife and then get other people to sell it, maybe? Maybe. Or it was like, uh, uh, yeah. what was that one that um, you go door to door with with makeup? You sell Av- I wanted to say Avalon, but that doesn't sound right. Yeah, that doesn't sound right either. Avon, Avon, Avon. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, to the larger point, I mean, you do start to see the influence your friends have in the sense that if you talk to them, they bring you down or, uh, how they talk to you, like how they, you know, what they say to you and what they say to you when you mess up or when you feel sad or what have you, but in general, just what they're doing. Like if your friends aren't if your aspiration is to take risks and grow your business or live a fulfilled life or whatever it is, it's, it's, it's to take what you have and be bigger or better or smarter or kinder, whatever the goal is, and your friends aren't doing that, it does influence you. There is a part of you that's like, well, fucking, you know, Marie is not doing that. So why should I do that? You know what I mean? Mm. Or you know, it looks really hard because none of my friends are doing it. Like, it's like, I, I always say like, you know, training with Hussein Bolt, you might not be as fast as him, but you're going to get faster just from training with him. You know what I mean? Just trying to chase him and catch up. So I think it's helpful to have, even if it's not the same field as you, but like, whatever your goals are, like, I like being a nice person. I like being surrounded by other nice people. I like being, you know, um, uh, innovative and, and creative. So I want to be around other creative people. I like, you know, creative business. I like, so I think all that stuff kind of helps, but also how you meet these people is important too. Like sometimes it's like, it's your parents. Like that's an influential person if you're close with your parents. So I do feel like my dad has a fair amount of influence on like the business side but then there's also like, I'll meet a comic that's just like business savvy and I get excited. And I'm like, oh, I want that person in my circle just because they're challenging the way I like think or whatever. Yeah, definitely. It's it's funny. It's like when I started stand up, I just before I started, I'd surrounded myself with it. I got a job at a comedy club. I talked to comedians and that's like all I did was like eat, sleep and breathe comedy. And um, then I became a comedian. And that's and and like now wanting to get into theater. um, taking a directing class and then volunteering to act. And then somebody was like, Oh, you should, you should, um, uh, look into this place. And then I, I auditioned for that. And now I'm in that theater company. And it's weird how, like, it's all just kind of progressing just, but just being around, like if I hadn't taken the directing class, I wouldn't have met that person who said the thing. It's just like yeah. placing yourself in situations of, um, where you want to be in life. It sounds yeah. simple, but it's like a lot of people just forget, <laughs> like, Yeah. I think because some of the stuff in the beginning is mandatory. School is mandatory. So the people you meet and what you end up doing is already influenced because you have to be at school. You know what I mean? I think things, sports, I mean, are optional, you know, so maybe that's like the first inclination that you meet certain people that are like-minded or, or have similar interests or whatever. But as you get older, A, you stop doing as many extracurricular activities in general. Um, But if you go to work and everybody hates their job, like that's that's going to be like a doubly awful work environment. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. Nobody feels like they're contributing to whatever. So it's just like I think it's about having multiple parts of your life that are a positive influence. And that can start easily with just a friend or a mentor or a peer or whatever, but, and that's also getting rid of shitty mentors and peers and friends. Like Mm. that was probably the biggest change for me was like in my mid to late twenties, just kind of pruning, like this person never makes me feel good about myself. This person is always criticizing me like, or this person never calls me back. They I'm always there for them. They never call me back. I'm giving a hundred percent. They're giving 20%. 
Why? It's funny how, how quickly that process happens the older you get. You know, like in your 20s, it takes you years to figure out someone's not yeah. a good influence in your life. And then by the time you get to your like late 30s, uh, you're like, like, it's almost immediate. Like, no, the way they said hello is like, no, it's no good. I'm not gonna- yeah, it's, it's going to be a no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on from this one. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I feel like that's you're and you're absolutely right. Like the person I cut out when I was like 25, I had known him for 10 years and he had always made me feel bad about myself. And I was like, I, I like had an epiphany. Like, I think this guy's, I get, I don't think he really cares about me. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and then it was like very, very clear. And then now I'm just like, Oh, this person doesn't care about me. Like, it's just so much quicker. And you're just yeah. like, I'm, I'm not fucking, that's the best part about being in your thirties. You're just like, no, I'm not doing but there's this. a lot less wondering and like, what did you do wrongs? And like, and then you're just like, fuck him. It's his shit. It's there yeah. or, or her problem. Like they're projecting yeah. their stuff onto me. Go to therapy. It's like, go to therapy and then like delete their number. Yeah. Like when I was at this audition um, for this theater, like this girl was like, she must have been like 20 and she she was talking to me and she's like, are you nervous? I was like, no, I'm just more worried. I don't have the lines down yet. But like because I was going over them in my head and she was like, well, don't worry. Like you can always audition again. And I was like, no, don't project your shit onto me. I wasn't worried. And be like, I know that. Like, I don't need your pep talk. Like, I don't know why it bothers yeah. me. Yeah, so she needs much. to do a pep talk to herself through you. Yeah, I'm like, get off of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't bounce that shit off me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're pretty enough, and your mom is gonna call you back. Like, I feel yeah, it. I it's like, and you're like, what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was like, Maria, you could destroy this girl in three seconds. Just leave her alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think my like, face oh, was like so thoughtful of you. <laughs> yeah girl i'm never gonna talk to yeah oh Oh, bless her heart (laughs) bless her heart um thanks dimitri thank you dimitri um google's yeah mine's intense well why don't i go first then or unless you want to lighten it up with mine yeah um you go first um i basically googled um would a cat get rid of spiders Oh, this is yeah. Because okay, I'm, I'm like, I mean, there's some like spiders. Sorry. There was a daddy dong legs on my ceiling, and as you said that, I was like, I wonder where he went. He's not oh yeah, they anymore. just fucking like you'll see a spider, and it'll be like a big chunky one, and you're like, ha, and then you look away, and then you look back, and he's gone. And that's even worse. <laughs> no, he knows my face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where you are at all times. <laughs> um, uh, just so you know, my cat's under the door. Just. I was doing an audition, like a live audition. Same thing. Like so distracting. Just just like so great. He almost has an axe, like just trying to get into the room. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I don't mind daddy long legs, actually, because there's just so yeah. many in this house. Like I can't like if I got scared of all of them, I would just be exhausted. Yeah. And I think specifically daddy long legs help with other bugs. So that one, it was so far away that I was like, you can stay. Like, I was like, yeah, don't fall on me. Like that would freak me out, but you're allowed to stay. Yeah. The ones that bother me are the ones that have like a body, <laughs> like, like, yeah, ugh, fucking disgusting. Um, and you know, a couple Sorry. I just had this thought, like you squish them and you're like, oh, that was a spleen. Like they have full organs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like <laughs> organs and shit, like a uh, but like, definable features <laughs> yeah like you can see their butt and you're like what why do you why do you have hips <laughs> yeah your thousand brown eyes are very beautiful um, <laughs> and so I uh yeah those are around and so it's just like you know I'm like my room's messy and I'm always afraid I'll get into bed and there's just gonna be a spider there um anyway so I, I looked up to see I'm like because there if there are mice in this place and there are spiders and if a cat does both like I don't know. I can't get a cat because I don't think I could be responsible for it. But if maybe I could convince someone else to. But I just wanted to see like if if that was something. And a lot of websites said like, yeah, that could be a route. But I got onto Reddit. And Reddit was like, it depends on the cat. Like every cat has their own personality. And some cats are like, like prone to seeking out uh, prey and other cats cannot be fucked. Yeah, (laughs) so so true just really and it's it's really funny to see like just like you know 
pasta was such, she killed so many mice. Like pasta was amazing. Like she really was the most impressed I ever was with her. I lived in this tiny studio and I swear like there was no, there's no room for me as a human. He, she was so depressed. I had to call my mom. I was like, something's wrong with pasta. I was like, I think she's depressed. She went from a two bedroom to this tiny studio. There was no room for her to row. Like, you know, my, my bed touched my kitchen, which touched my bathroom. Like it was so tiny. Yeah. And I was moving out. I was there for like a year and I was moving out and all my boxes were like a maze in my apartment the day before we were moving. I woke up to two dead mice. Like she had like, she was like, I just needed this space to roam. And she like fucking killed all the, <laughs> like, so impressive. Four um, mice were like, hey, welcome to this apartment. We made you a pie. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just, we had a farewell party. Um, but um, yeah, I'm curious with, with abs. He's a, he's a kitten, but I, he, he lo- like there was a fly in my apartment and it was like the best cat toy ever invented. Like I didn't see him for like three hours. Like he was just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've seen him around spiders. And the other thing is, is that they might get them, but they let them go. Like, I can't tell you oh, how really? many times I, I was watching abs. He was actually like very, very young, but I was watching abs. He got this, got this, um, spider. I was like, great job, abs. You're already doing a great job. And then he just, he just, and you're like, Hey, hey now it's in the house. Like, what, what do you, you think doing? that spider communicated to abs? Was he like, you're not going to want to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just he did trust some me like, on psychological, <laughs> you'd be like, Hey, young. This isn't, this isn't the fight you want. <laughs> yeah. you Fucking mafia of bugs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was like, I'm furry. You're furry. Don't be like this. We're brothers. You know who we should get is that non-furry one. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of furry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm Italian. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it really does depend. And the age of the cat as well. So I think, I think abs is too young to finish the job. And then you have these kind of older cats that are like truly cannot be fucked. They're like, that seems like a you problem. <laughs> yeah. So there's this like kind of middle, like two to, two to seven where they're just like peak kill. Like I got this for you. Like, yeah. Yeah. So there, I, I would never, I would never get a cat for spiders. I would get a cat for mice. Like if I had a mice infestation, I would absolutely get a cat. Yeah. Yeah. They recommend going to a shelter and asking like what the personalities were like and if they were prone to killing that's so weird though like you go in and be like um i have a couple of dead bugs can we show some of these cats see how they react yeah like, just put them on a show cats who kill and they're just like this yeah, yeah, yeah. Of them. <laughs> there's one cat that's like ooh, gross <laughs> guys no yucky, yucky. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we redo this Zoom thing and get to your intense? Yeah, sounds perfect. Okay. All right. What did you Google? Okay. So this is why mine's intense. Um, I feel like everybody, everybody that listens to this podcast knows everything about my bladder. Um, so I went. I've been seeing urologists for like six months. I've tried like a bunch of drugs. I've tried a bunch of stuff. They're mostly just giving me side effects and like either not helping at all or helping like 20%. And I was like, well, this isn't worth like genuine dry mouth. Like I was like, I can't, I can't perform like, that. like I can't think straight, let alone perform like this. So I definitely didn't want to do the drugs. And then the other option, the other, so the less invasive was drugs. The most invasive was surgery. And I didn't want to do surgery either. So in the middle is, um, injections, um, and there was a couple of different options. And the one that seemed the best for me was I got my bladder injected with Botox, which I find hilarious considering I'm very anti-Botox. I'm so averse to Botox. <laughs> and this, you'll appreciate this. So like I had a, you know, I had seen this woman a couple of times and then um, I, she gave me all the stuff to go over and I went over it with my dad, like best options. And then we had this virtual appointment where we talked about what was going to be the next step. And, you know, I'm making jokes and I was like, oh, I can't wait to tell. I was like, I'm just so anti-Botox. I can't wait to tell all my friends that I got like Botox in my vagina. She's like, it's your bladder. And I was like, I know I'm being fine. It's fine. It's Please not. don't tell people I've done that. <laughs> and then I said something else. I was just like, I can't wait to have the smoothest bladder. And she's like, also not how it works. Okay. <laughs> it does not find me funny at all. Um, like genuinely bombing with this doctor. 
So anyway, I think it's because they get sued all the time. So it's like, no, yeah, just need to like, nope, make sure definitely. you know. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, it's the bladder. Uh, this is being recorded, and I'm under a lawsuit. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> So anyway, so that's what I got done. I got, I got Botox injected in my bladder to help with my overactive bladder. And it, it's supposed to have the least side effects as well as it lasts six to eight months. So if there are issues, then it's, you know what I mean? Then it's gone or whatever. Mm. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> one of the most unpleasant experiences of my life, genuinely. So they numb it. So they go in there, they numb it. You're supposed to sit there for 20 minutes. She left me for an hour. So I was, yeah. Go in yeah. there. How do they get to your bladder? Some swabbies. Okay. So up. Yeah. It's like something and they go in there and they swab it. There's, okay. It, yeah. Um, I mean, so they're not like putting a needle into your uterus or whatever, like from the, from the stomach. They're no, going it, up it's to your side. Okay. Yeah. They're coming. They're going in. <laughs> um, so they do that. They said it takes about 20 minutes. They left me in there for an hour. So then I had to pee. And so I'm like in my little paper dress and I'm like peeking out and I go, hi. Cause this is the funny thing is like, I'm very much my dad. I timed it, but I was timing it because, you know I'm left in a room half naked and I have anxiety and being able to look at the timer and be like, oh, she'll be here in 10 minutes. But then I'm looking and it's 45 minutes and then it's an hour. So at wow. an hour, I was like, hi. And the last time I went to see her in person, I got a ticket for street cleaning because I went at nine street cleaning is at 11. This is a, supposed to be a half hour appointment. And now I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so luckily I didn't have anything to do later, but like, so, so I, I have to pee. And so I peek my head out. I go, Hey, A, is she coming? And B, like, am I allowed to pee? And at first the woman's like, I think so. And the other one's like, you can't like you'll pee out the numbing stuff. And I go, okay, well, can somebody come like what are we doing here yeah so so then she comes in and she's like oh so sorry and I was like dude I'm here for overactive bladder like you left me in here for an hour the problem is I have to pee every hour like what is we doing here yeah and she's like oh so sorry but like Wait, so cut now to her she was like at brunch with her girlfriends just like having a mimosa and just going I feel like there's something I need to be doing anyway oh my god tell me about your date last night yeah yeah <laughs> So I was just like, Jesus Christ. So now keep in mind, like everybody knows what it feels like to have a full bladder, but like it causes me anxiety. So I have a full bladder. I'm scared. And now I'm going to have needles in it because mm. I can't pee. So the first thing they do is they put a camera in and it was so fucking painful. I started crying. So it's two women. They're putting this camera in and I'm like, gripping the, the chair. And, and then she's like, almost done. I was like, almost done. You're going to put 10 needles in my bladder and I'm crying at the camera part. Like, oh my God. You know I mean? like just genuinely, like, so I'm covering my face crying, just being like, Oh my God. And I had asked her, I was like, how painful is this needle? She goes, you know, some, you know, the numbing cream is decent, but some people feel it. Some people don't. And I was like, cool. So now at camera level, I can feel it. But it turned out like needle wise, I would say if it was, it was, it was 10 shots, four of them hurt. Like I would say moderately hurt. And the other six were like, I couldn't really feel it, but it was, oh, and then I had to pee. So then I had to like get up and the pee was at least a relief. And then the second time I peed was actually quite painful. And now everything's fine. Uh -huh. But I was like, don't recommend guys. Like, do not get, How go get bladder that? Botox. I mean, who knows? Like I, maybe next time if I, if this does work and it takes a week to know if it works. So I won't know until next Monday. Okay. Um, but that's what my, my Google was. What are the side effects of Botox injections? Like, what did I just fucking get myself into? Yeah. Um, and the only one that she really told me about was like the thing that she says it's very rare, but it could actually do too good of a job and you could have trouble emptying your bladder. Oh my God. So then you would need a catheter. And again, oh that's, that's very, very rare. The less rare, but still rare is UTIs, which is not fun. Uh, urinary tract infections and then um, painful or difficult urination. So those are like, they're all pretty rare. And like I said, this, if this works, it'll last six to eight months. And that'll be what makes me decide if I'm going to do it again. Um, but then I was thinking like twice a year, 
I'm going to have the worst day. Oh my God. Maybe it'll be worth it once you realize you're not peeing every, every hour, but like, so what happens yeah, on like long I, road trips? Do you have to, do you have to pull over every hour? So I kind of de- de- uh, um, dehydrate myself oh, Okay. if I'm being honest. So I will spend the, so let's, so like to my parents, it's a couple of hours now. So the first half of the trip, I won't drink anything. And then if I get tired and I need like a coffee or a tea, that's the second half of the trip. So that when I need to get gas, I can go pee. So I, same thing with flying. I will not drink in the morning. I will not drink on the plane. And then all my hydration is once I'm off the plane. Okay. So I do a lot of purposeful dehydration. Yeah. But like, I'm, you know, I mean, you've stayed with me. I get up multiple times in the middle of the night. I pee before I leave. I pee when I get to the place. I pee before we leave the place. Like, I don't, I don't want to live that life. And the, really the biggest thing is in the middle of the night, like, Last night I only got up twice, but there's times where I get up anywhere from three to five times in the middle of the night. And every time my cat thinks she, that we're playing. (laughs) (laughs) Like when I, when I didn't have, when I didn't have abs, it was a little easier to go to sleep, but like abs is like either sleeping on me or he's sleeping next to me. And so I get up to pee and he was just like, I also wanted to play at (laughs) 3am. Can't believe we're up right now. Great minds think alike. This is so great. (laughs) It's like I was saying it to her. She felt it. (laughs) So man, Uh, I mean, if it works, I will absolutely tell you guys if it works. Like, and I hope it works because God damn, was that a bad, bad morning? Oh wow! I hope it works too, and I hope you only need to do it once a year. And that sounds that was hard to listen to. Yeah, it was. Oh, I like, I'm pretty good at doing things by myself. Genuinely, like I've gotten tattoos by myself. You know, I've, I've, I've done almost everything painful and not painful by myself. That was one of the first times I wish I could have held someone's hand. Like I was like, I genuinely was like, I want my mom. Yeah, I really love you just coming on a paper gown going, what are we doing here? <laughs> kind of like, I'm just like half naked and angry. Just she's pretty much, I think who I'm going to grow up to be. Oh, that would have just like, me crazy. Yeah. I have to pee. That's why I'm here guys. You're a urologist. Like <laughs> my file is like pee too much. Like, come on. <laughs> oh, that now made me so angry, <laughs> aggressive little girl who pees too much. <laughs> That's, they don't even use my real name. No. Uh, okay. Let's get personal. Yeah. I think we got very personal um, with my bladder. Okay. Uh, question is uh, what chance encounter changed your life forever? Um, the one I thought of, but I feel like I've told this story before, but like uh, maybe I haven't, but like um, I, I graduated college and I didn't want to like use my degree and I decided I wanted to work at a comedy club. <laughs> Sorry. Just, that's such a funny sentence. And so I was like, Oh, I'll work at a comedy club. That's so obvious now. And uh, I went to apply and the girl was like at the box office is like, we're not hiring. And I was like, that's weird. Cause like my instincts were really strong about this. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? And she's like, we're not hiring, but I was like, can I have an application? She's like, sure. Um, and then I was hungry. And then, so I go to Chipotle and the manager of the funny bone was there. And I was like, oh, I was just at the club and I was seeing if you were hiring, but I guess you're not. He's like, yeah, we are. And I was like, you are? And he was like, we're hiring for box office. She just, she straight up lied to me. And I was like, yeah, she's like, oh, I, I, have I want all these hours. Yeah. He was like, well, fill it out and like come in, whatever, like, you know. And uh, because I ran into him at Chipotle, I, you know, I, I found out they were hiring. I submitted the application and, you know, got the job. I thought that I got the job because I was amazing. And I found out like, later that there were only two applicants probably because she was telling everyone they weren't hiring yeah 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 and the other guy showed up like a half hour late and so that was the only reason he went with me yeah whatever I'll take it yeah yeah I I mean I'm trying to think like my first instinct was my friend Danny because I find it so weird how I met her like I was in a, I was in the fourth grade and I went to the bathroom and she was in the bathroom and I guess we talked or she made a joke. Something happened and I connected with another 10 year old in a bathroom and I was like, that girl's awesome. And I don't even know to this day, like how, like, 
So what happened is we liked each other. We met in a bathroom for five minutes. Sounds shady. (laughs) And we liked each other. And she invited me to her. Oh, that's what it was. I met her in a bathroom, thought she was awesome. And then it turns out this girl, Pinky, who was in my fourth grade class, Danny was her neighbor. So like, Two weeks later, I go to the sleepover and Danny's there. And I'm like, the girl from the bathroom. Like, (laughs) this is so cool. Like, this is crazy. So we, like, all the games we paired up with, our sleeping bags were next to each other. And we just fucking crazy bonded at the sleepover. So then I invited her to my birthday party sleepover. I love 10-year-olds talking. And then, and whatever. But it was like, we were trying to build a friendship, but it was kind of hard because everything's based on like your class. And then the next year in the fifth grade, she was in my class and we just like became best friends. And then again, serendipitously, uh, we were in the same class um, for sixth grade. And then she left and I left and whatever. But I still to this day, am like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like I met her in a bathroom. And it's almost like those misconnections, you know what I mean? But for like friendship. And then the fact that this girl that I was in my class, that that was her neighbor. And it was like, but I remember being like the girl from the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) And that's what, you know, that's who I'm staying with when I'm in Florida. And we've been friends for God, almost 30 years, which is crazy to think about. But those kind of like, I don't know. That's just so, I don't know. There I don't know if this counts as a chance encounter, but I don't think that bookers of other clubs generally come to comedy clubs and watch comedy. Or no, I invited her. Was it I don't the think it was chance. Yeah. Yeah. But that changed both of our lives forever because we did it really did. We did angel comedy and then she booked us um for several weeks and that paid for our next trip to the UK. And and then that kind of started us on this path of doing comedy over here but I don't think there was a chance. I mean, it didn't work out, but I do find the trajectory of your, your engagement kind of funny <laughs> in the sense that I, so I was, we were in the UK together, but I was heartbroken and I was in a place where I was like, I'm not dating. I'm just going to make as many friends as possible. Oh, and yeah. And so I was really open. And when I saw somebody funny or somebody seemed nice, I'd always be like, Hey, I'm in town for a couple of weeks. Do you want to get coffee? So I had seen you're now ex fiance, but I had seen him on stage. He was super funny. And I was like, Hey, you know, I messaged, messaged him on Twitter. I was like, I'm in town for a little bit. Do you want to get coffee? I would love to learn like more about the UK scene. And we were staying together and you're like, can I come? And I was like, can I bring my friend? And then we, you came and then you guys hit it off. And I was like, I'm trying to learn about comedy and not date a Maria. (laughs) And then, you know, even that kind of took your life to another. And that was, that was all because I was, heartbroken looking for friendship like aggressively looking it's for friendship. it's so funny how your broken heart led to my broken heart yeah i'm sorry i ruined your life <laughs> <laughs> wow i'm sorry but, I ruined your life. but i do think of that sometimes where like people take so much pride of like you know they're married because of me and i'm like you know she had a couple bad years because of me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I never oh, I did it hard for You're that. Welcome. <laughs> but if you think about it, that got you to the UK, which now has your no, boyfriend course. now. I'm, so I'm, I'm taking joking. all credit. Yeah. Johnny, yeah. I, I get all credit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to give you all credit. I got myself over here in the first place. So no. <laughs> I'm, <just> like, <laughs> these, like, I'm in there somewhere. I'm just Someone's there, taking like, credit helped. anyway. I see that. <laughs> He's like, I helped. <laughs> Let's hope you don't get married. The, my fucking, you know, lady speech is going to be like, let me tell you about how I made this all happen. <laughs> yeah. Cut to cats, my bridesmaid, like my best yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, she would get a, a way better speech. I don't, I don't deny that. But I would, I would be like mouthing it in the background. I'd be like, that's not true. Actually, 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 you don't want to learn the true story. (laughs) That'd be so funny. I'm like puck, like poking out behind a cake, being like, some of these are false. Just saying. (laughs) I'm just saying. Um, If you want the unedited version, um, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to think of like other, like kind of. I mean, I'm sure there. Everything feels so fucking like serendipitous and like this is crazy. Like, yeah, I don't know. 
also like, I think about this a lot, like a lot of my frustration in my life and career is because my dad taught me that everything is, everything happens because of hard work. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot happens because of hard work, but you have to understand there's some, that's just not enough. Like it's, it's just not like there's, there is absolutely privilege, but what did they used to say? It was, it was, it's luck, talent, and hard work. And yeah. I was like, I was like hard work. I'm going to give, I'm going to give a hundred percent to hard work. And then I do think there is some innate talent, but a lot, a lot of talent grows from hard work. So you can kind of, you see that we've seen the growth in what hard work does for abilities and getting better and being more confident. So there's those two, but we don't think about luck, whether luck is this, this privilege, like the fact that your parents might have money or that, you know, you got into a good school or you were in a class with somebody that fucking invented something, whatever it is. But then also just being in the right place at the right time, or, you know, you missed a train and now you're on this later train and somebody was on that train. Like there is this aspect of luck that I would get so discouraged about because I didn't believe it had value or I didn't want to wait for it because it's completely out of my control. And as I've gotten older, I've started to be grateful for luck. I didn't really do much. Maybe I was, it was lucky that I was there and I built my way up to even being in this room because of the hard work I did. But there's some, some luck is just luck. And like some people are just lucky and just accepting that. And then also just being like, there's definitely things that were lucky that I'm not seeing them as lucky because I just assumed I should have them or whatever that aspect is. And I think more and more I look at chance encounters or people I've met or things that just worked out and just go, that's some luck and you just got to appreciate it. Um, you know how like sometimes like things in life, like, uh, they kind of mirror themselves or like, like something comes up that like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like something comes up that like you were just thinking about, or like maybe you were just thinking about someone and then they pop into your life and stuff like that. Like Dwayne Perkins, I think calls them like God winks. Yeah. Um, can I tell you about this one that happened? It was so strange. It's not a chance encounter because it doesn't involve like running into a person. Yeah. But I, I was at um, my friend Jonathan's birthday and we were in a park. This girl was talking to me and she was like, yeah, I just feel like my brain is foggier after COVID. Like I, she was like, like, I, I don't have a certainty about words anymore. And she was like, you know how, like, if you say a word over and over again, like if you're like lemonade, 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 it starts to sound weird. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, it's kind of like that. Like, I don't have like words just sound weird and I don't know if they're right. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Anyway, she leaves, goes to another party. Um, <laughs> and then uh, this other girl turns to me about 20 minutes later and she goes, Maria, how do you say lemonade? And I was like, lemonade. And she was like, lemonade. Cause she was American and everyone else is English or British or whatever. And, uh, and then they were like, Oh, you don't say lemonade, lemonade. And I was like, lemonade. They're like lemonade. And then, and then like suddenly like 10 people are saying lemonade at me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> You're like, um, something broke in this, uh, this, uh, weird mirror that like, you know what I mean? Let's, yeah. Like <laughs> lemonade, that would lemonade, freak me lemonade. out. I'd be like, all right, all right, English people, you calm down. Yeah, I was like, please stop saying lemonade. <laughs> stop yelling at me about citrus beverages. <laughs> like somebody just was just talking about. I, I don't know. It was weird. Um, I don't know what the point of those sort of things are, but it's weird when they happen. Yeah, and I, I do, I do like that thing when you think of somebody, especially not somebody like you know. If I think of you, it's like I think of you every day. Like you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. everything I do I'm like Maria would tell me not to do that oh Maria make fun of me here like yeah like there's a I little think like about you every day too I don't know <laughs> um but I if somebody like from high school like um yeah. you know some like I don't know just somebody I haven't seen in like 10 years and I, they pop in my head and then they message me even if it was like oh I saw your bit and it's like yeah it's not completely out of nowhere like I'm on the internet you follow me but like I don't know it, I'll just be like yeah it's weird yeah but right. I don't know I want to I would love to hear about people's like a chance encounter like I think clearly the ones that people love are like rom-com like you know what I mean like you meet your partner or whatever but I don't know something that changed your work something that I don't know something that yeah a, a or your that, like little <laughs> little things that synchronize weirdly for no reason that had no yeah you get it 
Yeah, you get a cat, you have a fucking mouse infestation and it fixes it. Like, <laughs> um, but uh, you can write to us. Where can they write to us, Maria? At two non doctors at gmail.com. That's the number two full word doctors at gmail.com. And we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.